In a healthy person, respiration occurs as air goes in through the nose or the mouth to the pharynx and the larynx. From there, it goes to the trachea that branches into bronchi, then bronchioles, then to round sacs called alveoli, where gas exchange takes place. In a person suffering from asthma, the airways become inflamed and swollen and the muscle vents surrounding them constrict. This prevents the movement of air to and from the alveoli. There are two different ways in which asthma can affect health. There is intrinsic, or non-atopic asthma, and extrinsic, or atopic asthma. In intrinsic asthma, a person is affected by factors that come from within. Attacks are brought on by factors such as stress, exercise, and sickness. There is much that is unknown in the way of intrinsic asthma. Extrinsic asthma is triggered by external substances entering the lungs. Things like pollen, dust mites, and animal dander. A person suffering from asthma has a hypersensitivity to these things on a cellular level. The bronchioles of a healthy person are lined with a thin layer of mucus. There is a layer of simple columnar epithelial cells that are ciliated, complete with mucus-producing goblet cells. Below the basement membrane, one can find the lamina propria. Superficial to that, there is a thin band of smooth muscle. This video will be focusing on extrinsic asthma, as it is more common and more thoroughly understood. There is a thick layer of mucus due to a high number of goblet cells, and the layer of smooth muscle surrounding the bronchioles is much thicker than in normal physiology. When an allergen, such as animal dander, is inhaled, specific immunological processes in the body begin and initiate an acute asthma attack. Dendritic cells, as one example, will phagocytose the particles and then become antigen presenting. When T helper 2 cells detect the antigen, they send out the signal for B cells to release plasma cells. The plasma cells then produce immunoglobin E antibodies, or IgE antibodies, that are specialized for allergic reactions, particularly type 1 hypersensitivity. The IgE then attaches to the mast cell to form an IgE mast cell complex. Once this antigen antibody complex is attached to an allergen, it activates the classical pathway of the complement system. This pathway involves a cascade in which proteins are activated in an orderly sequence. Afterwards, the IgE mast cell complex undergoes degranulation and releases proteins such as histamine. This effect causes vasodilation, which leads to inflammation of the airways, and the smooth muscles surrounding the airways contract. Another process that occurs when an allergen is inhaled is that the T helper 2 cell also signals eosinophils. The function of eosinophils is to assist with the inflammation process, but when a person is continuously exposed to an allergen, fibrosis and remodeling can occur. Fibrosis is the process of scar tissue forming in the airways, which permanently affects airflow. Remodeling is the irreversible narrowing of these airways. Damage to the bronchial epithelium contributes to the pathogenesis of the disease. The increased mucus production also prevents the movement of air. Now, let's review with some of the key concepts. Homeostasis. In the bronchioles, when the smooth muscles are constricted and there is an increase in mucus production, it is challenging for the air to get to the alveoli. In a healthy person, air is able to flow freely. Proteins. Antibodies are glycoproteins. There are MHC proteins on antigen-presenting cells. Cat dander is a FEL-D1 protein. Interleukins are signaling proteins. In immune responses, histamine is considered a protein hormone. Cell membrane. The cell membrane plays a key role in endocytosis. It is also crucial for exocytosis. Symptoms. As a nurse, some symptoms that can be observed are coughing, wheezing and whistling, chest tightness and pain, and shortness of breath. Treatment. Bronchodilators are used to treat a sudden onset asthma attack. They work by helping to relax the smooth muscle around the airway and by stopping the inflammatory response. These may be called rescue inhalers. They are primarily used as short-acting beta-2 agonists. Corticosteroids are a possible treatment for asthma that work by preventing the inflammatory response from occurring in the first place. As a preventative measure, they must be taken regularly and do not help treat sudden acute attacks. The end. Meow!